1858, George W. Morse designed essential features of what was to become the centerfire primer system, an anvil formed inside the case with the base center primer. The anvil was formed out of soldered wire. A rubber seal held the fulminite mercury filled primer in place. Seven years later, the self-contained metallic cartridge was still in a preliminary stage of development. With the conclusion of the American Civil War in 1865, Frankfurt Arsenal, we initiated experiments to develop a satisfactory centerfire cartridge system that would be adopted for converted military small arms going forward in the post-war era. In 1866, Hiram Burdan's revolutionary exposed centerfire cartridge concept for military use was disregarded, as the Ordnance Department periodically sought innovations being devised within the military institution. Burdan's innovation in small arm cartridges went on to be adopted by both foreign and domestic munition manufacturers after 1867. Subsequently, with the adoption of the Springfield Model 1866, designed by the government arsenal's master armor Erskine Allen, a more modern metallic cartridge was adopted too, the Edwin Martin Prime 5070 United States Government. Martin's inside prime cartridge would only be produced by Frankfurt Arsenal for just a few short years. On February 14, 1871, the engineer released his final patented primer system that was intended to ameliorate the bar anvil design he had introduced in January 1865. But due to the relative complexity of his improved folded copper case design, in which a protruding circular primer-like disc was folded into the cartridge's base, Frankfurt Arsenal stopped manufacturing Martin's new variation after just seven months of production in December of 1871. The Philadelphia munitions plant had developed a more satisfactory and less complex centerfire cartridge system that was to be adopted going forward. Stephen Vincent Benet was a career military officer for the Union Army. Appointed to the Ordnance Corps following his 1849 graduation from the United States Military Academy, the Southern officer during his career served at multiple government arsenals. In 1869, Major Benet was promoted to the Assistant Chief of the Ordnance Bureau in Washington, D.C. Five years later, Benet became the Chief of the Ordnance Bureau with the rank of Brigadier General. With experience in examining and testing gunpowder projectiles throughout the war, in early 1866, the then major at Frankfurt Arsenal devised his unpatented inside prime cartridge system. The Philadelphia munitions plant went on to perfect Benet's system between 1866 and 1871. Like Martin's cartridges, Binet cartridges are not reloadable, since the primer was integrated within the case. And like Martin's cartridges, Binet prime cartridges are rather distinctive, as the folded copper case has two characteristic crimps. These crimps secure the cup within the case. The cup, containing fulminite mercury, served as an anvil that enabled the priming mixture to ignite when struck by the firing pin. The idea of a longer case originated from Binet's stance that such a cartridge provided better protection for the long, often heavy, lead bullet, as the outside lubed lead bullet was seated deeper within the case. With the surface retention of the form case around the seated bullet, only a moderate crimp into the bullet's cantilever was necessary to keep the projectile in place. Intended to be an improvement over the red fire cartridge, a certain issue with Binet's cartridges persisted the failure to extract and eject spent copper shells. While the copper rimfire cartridge had a tendency to fracture at the rim, these early centerfire copper cases expanded within the chamber. After extended firing, the expanded case would get stuck in the fouled chamber, leading to the soldier to use his knife or cleaning rod to extract the spent shell. Even in the best conditions, these early copper cases were susceptible to corrosion, 
caused by sweat and the elements while they were held in Mill's cartridge belts worn by the troops. With the advent of brass shells by 1890, the Malibu copper case was replaced for military cartridges going forward. Production of the inside prime cartridge was costly. From December 1871 to 1885, Frankfurt Arsenal manufactured the non-reloadable Binet prime cartridge for military use. By 1885, the internal primer system had become antiquated, as military tests were favoring centerfire cartridges with exposed primers. The Ornance Department's acceptance of these improved primer systems was slow. With the adoption of the 30 United States Army cartridge, military munition manufacturers continued to use a primer cup made of copper. But due to bolt face erosion by hot gases escaping rearward, caused by the firing pin piercing the primer, the copper cup was replaced with the brass cup in 1895. Stephen Vincent Binet's inside prime cartridge system serves as a footnote in the annuals of the development of cartridges as a viable transitional development between early centerfire cartridges and the military's first true centerfire cartridges. Today, weapons such as the trapdoor, altered rifle muskets fitted with the Remington system, and other weapons chambered for Binet cartridges can still be found. These arms, that were the genesis of the breech-loaded metallic cartridge era, not only serve as a collector's item, but also can still be used on the range, in reenactments, and as a viable hunting firearm. As these weapons were chambered for this archaic cartridge system, they are still able to adequately discharge modern Boxer Prime cartridges. 
Unlike the weapons that these transitional cartridges were produced for, the May Prime cartridges produced by Frankfurt Arsenal only serve as historical pieces, not to be fired, but to be proudly displayed on a cartridge collector's board.